Coming up, watching war. The New Yorkers keeping a close eye on the violence unfolding in their hometowns in Ukraine. Quiet and cold for the evening, but timing out that wintry mess for tonight. And we've got a great lesson coming up in how to create your own dumplings at home. New York Live is here with a master class with Christine Wong. Hey, what's up? This is News for Now for February 24th. I'm Kay Ingra. Now, I'm sure you've been hearing a lot about Russia's attempts to invade Ukraine. Well, here at home, Ukrainians living here woke up to the news of Russia's invasion. About a third of them live in the East Village. About 80,000 Ukrainians live in the city. Dozens attended a mass Thursday morning at St. George Ukrainian Catholic Church on East 7th. People there telling us they were praying for family and friends and hometowns that are now in wartime. They remember when, back in 2014, Russia invaded their country and took over Crimea. Many now fear a repeat of that nightmare or even worse. We spoke with a Ukrainian American man who's been living in the city for over 55 years and is anxiously waiting to see what happens next. I could not watch the news yesterday. I'm going to work now. I'm in tears because the Russian people don't want that. But they're going to have to be the ones who get rid of Putin, no one else. And isolate, get them out of there. We're shocked that uh, he went in. He's actually bombing major cities, amphibian assault in Odessa, which is, I mean, I, I don't know what he's going to do. What I do know is people are afraid for their lives. This is Putin's legacy. That's his legacy. And there's no reason for war right now. Many here say they have not been able to reach people back home. A large crowd gathered at a Long Island church Wednesday, in case you missed it, to say goodbye to one of New York's bravest. The line of firefighters in Bayshore stood with heavy hearts for a final salute to FDNY firefighter Jesse Gerhardt. His grieving family clung to one another. Gerhard lived his childhood dream of joining the FDNY. He was only 33 when he died last week, one day after battling a fire in Far Rockaway. Firefighters from across the country came to salute Gerhard, who continues to save lives as an organ donor. The cause of his death is still under investigation. Also new, a bad haircut takes a dangerous turn at a New Jersey barbershop. Y'all check this out. Surveillance video shows a man barge through the door of a shop in North Bergen and start dumping a five gallon container of fuel on the floor. Workers immediately jumped into action and tackled him. Police say the man was angry about a haircut his father had gotten, complaining about the price and the cleanliness of the tools. They're also investigating a claim the dad was threatened with a pair of scissors. We spoke to the shop owner who didn't want to be identified. I was thinking about everybody when I saw it. When I saw that, I was, I thought, I thought like, we don't want to burn here. <laughs> That's what I thought. Police identified the suspect as 30-year-old Umberto Venegas. He faces a series of charges, including causing or risking widespread injury and criminal mischief. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4, meteorologist Maria La Rosa. Pretty gray, very chilly day, and the evening for the most part is pretty quiet. It's late tonight toward 11 o'clock midnight that we start to see that real wintry mess take over. Temperatures staying in the 30s by 11 o'clock, starting off as some snow, but for the city, quickly mixing in with sleet and freezing rain. To the north of the city, a different story, that accumulating snowfall coming down pretty quickly. You can see by 2 a.m. in the thick of it, south of the city, likely heavy rainfall. We're looking at I-84 and northward, some of that heavy snow. In fact, coming down maybe as fast as one to two inches of snow per hour. By tomorrow morning and that morning commute in the rain from the city, Long Island and southward, and a little bit more to go of that wintry mess as we head into Friday midday. Those winter weather advisories are in effect through tomorrow, along with those winter storm warnings in Pink, Sullivan, Ulster, and Dutchess counties. That's where we could see as much as a half a foot or more of snowfall. News 4 celebrates Black History Month. Terrence Blanchard is a trailblazing trumpeter and composer. His opera Fire Shut Up in My Bones was the first ever performed by a black composer at the Metropolitan Opera. The Oscar nominee and six-time Grammy winner began his career at 18 in the Lionel Hampton Orchestra and has composed 40 scores for films like Spike Lee's Black Klansman. The New Orleans native is touring and writing today. 
have another opera at the Met in 2023, aptly titled Champion. Terrence Blanchard is part of our collective history, and together we are for New York. Now with winter slowly on the way out, imagine the comfort of a nice pillowy dumpling that you made yourself. Well, we've got the perfect teacher for that. She's a cookbook author and social influencer. New York Live is here with this dumpling master, just in time for the Year of the Tiger. This Lunar New Year marks the Year of the Tiger, and one of my favorite things about this holiday is the food. But you can't do Lunar New Year without the dumpling, so we're gonna meet my friend and cookbook author, Christine Wong, who's gonna show us how to fold some. Happy Year of the Tiger, Christine. Happy Year of the Tiger. So you are essentially the dumpling master, and I know that you host these dumpling classes that benefit the AAPI community and just other communities around the country. But how did you come to be so good at folding dumplings? Well, I just, you know, it's from a love for a love of dumplings. It's something that you, you can make from scratch with very little ingredients. And you can make a full meal out of it. You can uh, kind of add any filling to it. So it's, it's a really good staple. When you are eating dumplings, these cleats are where you put the soy sauce. And it's like saucy and yummy and savory. Yeah, it catches everything. Christine, you're very encouraging. Thank you for being a good teacher. <laughs> Hey, at the end of the day, you're, 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 you're enjoying your food. You're okay. well, these look very different. <laughs> All right, now it's the best part. Let's steam these and eat them, Christine. <laughs> okay, let's do it. It's like a work of art. I don't even know if I can eat this. It's so pretty. But we're going to eat. Well, I'm feeling lucky already, but the cool thing about being here with you is you're actually in the middle of Chinatown. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you would have some insight into the cool, fun, festive places that are in this neighborhood. Yeah, you want me to take you? Oh, let's go, yeah, let's go. So Michelle, this is Dim Sum Gogo. This is where I come to eat when I'm not making dumplings because they make the dumplings fresh every day. I mean, I just want to take a moment, Christine, for these pleats. Look at, now that I've made dumplings with you, this looks like it's next level. Yeah. Well, thank you, Christine, for the dumpling demo, for the tour of Chinatown. I have had such a fantastic time with thank you. Thank you. Let's eat. Thank you. Yeah. Colorful circles are illuminating Brooklyn. It's all part of an interactive art exhibit that's already traveled the world. News 4's Gus Rosendale gives you a closer look. Well, this is a sculpture composed of um, originally created from hundreds of interactive platforms. Like any journey, you have to move to enjoy this and you get to have a playful experience. It all begins with a single step. So you also get to have an experience with others. The Pool, an interactive art display now open at Industry City in Brooklyn. If you dance on the platforms, light will spin around you. <laughs> And it's really designed to sort of engage and activate public place. 100 touch sensitive glowing discs span out across the center courtyard. People can meander from disc to disc, changing colors along the way. Creator Jen Lewin hopes this kind of active art brings people together. And boy, we haven't um, had a lot of opportunities to yeah. do that over the last two yeah. years. So you're leaving your screen, you're moving your body, and you're having an experience within public art. If you step on the center one there, it'll change the colors of all of them. The exhibit, part of an ongoing effort by Industry City to feature artists in a unique showplace. We love art, we love to create. I think what we do some is, is artistic in a way, if you look at the way we design the place and, and build it and develop it. The pool's gonna be at Industry City here for a couple of weeks, but over the years it has traveled the world and the artist says it's been interesting to see the different reactions depending where it is. Kids get it, they jump in. Um, adults are a little bit more hesitant, but all over the world, <laughs> Everyone is really sort of engaged with it. A universal experience combining art and play. The pool is open daily from 3 to 9 p.m. until March 28th. At Industry City in Brooklyn, Gus Rosendale, News 4 New York. All right, friends, that's it for today's show. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow.